Hello everyone, you are listening to You've Got Five Options show with Marta and Anna. Join us while we are solving yet another life challenge. And if you decide to share your problem with us, yours can be next. Hello everyone, this is Marta and Marta, because Anna is not here with us today. Unfortunately, uh, this is quite unusual. It's like totally unusual. Uh, It has never happened before. Unfortunately, our my second half here in You've Got Five Options, Anna, she had a surgery yesterday and she's not yet completely up and running with her health. So she's taking care of herself right now. It's nothing serious. She's doing fine. She just needs to rest. So you guys don't need to worry, but you can send her some, you know, warm thoughts with uh, getting well wishes. And I today here in the studio in You've Got Five Options show luckily have Lesse. Yeah. Hi. And I also have a lovely guest, Edita. Hi. So in a moment, Edita will tell you a little bit more about herself. But I just wanted to tell you guys that today we are talking about a very, very difficult choice. A choice between your heart and your wallet. So if you are in a situation where you would like to follow your heart, but some financial things are stopping you from being able to do that, or you have a great dilemma, should you quit your ludicrous job? Uh, Not ridiculous. Uh, I wanted to say something like, you know, like somewhere where you earn good money to follow your heart, but you don't even know if the money is there. This episode is for you. This will be a part one of five great things to consider and five scenarios for choosing between your heart or wallet. So we will start by asking a few extremely important questions and then we will go through five scenarios when choosing between your heart and wallet. But let's start with our lovely guest, Edita. Edita, tell us a little bit about yourself. Who are you? I work in media, and uh, as we will talk today, I choose the job that is my passion and that I feel my total heart is in this video and digital world. But I used to work in uh, some corporations, and as many people, I change it for something that I truly feel called for. Okay, so this is our expert who was working in a corporate world and is now following her heart fully and working in different types of media. So tell us, Edita, what kind of media job do you do? I do a lot of uh, video programs, interviews, uh, campaign, music videos, and things like this. Yeah. So where do you currently work? I work in uh, one big media house, but also I do, as a freelancer, a lot of projects. Okay. So to let our listeners know you just a little bit better, tell me, Who did you want to be when you were a child? Actually, I know this very well because uh, we had such a homework at my primary school and I have this until now. And I wanted to be a writer and I wanted to be a translator. So and I wrote there in this mm, essay that I wanted to travel around the world, that I wanted wanted to have family because I, I see that like always this was my value that I wanted to have family, kids friends but I wanted to travel and do something with people and that was my something that I wish for. So right now in your current life you're not necessarily writing. A lot. You are writing? Yeah. Okay. Also writing for yes. the for your job or is it something additional? As addition. As additional. Yes. Okay. So there is even more heart yes. <laughs> than <laughs> the media. Yes. I got a, a lot of things that I I always have uh, too many ideas. Okay. Great. I know that pain when you have a lot of ideas. What about you, Lesse, and your following heart <laughs> time? Where is your heart laying? Right now, I guess it's in Amsterdam. <laughs> your heart is in Amsterdam. Yeah. That's interesting. Uh, you know, I, uh, well, I guess if we're talking about dreams, I don't know. Uh, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a film director from a very young age. I think I was like seven or eight years when I discovered there was something called a film director that you could work with film <laughs> for a living. I thought that was insane. 
So I think that's kind of why I let down the path of a lot of, I do a lot of photography in my spare time and eventually I ended up here today in, you know, media house where I work. But right now I just, I don't know what to say. I just want to go travel. Um, you know, it's nothing to do with career. It's nothing to do with education. I just want to follow my heart for a bit, you know, it's, it sounds really simple and that's what it is, to be honest. And I got the opportunity to move to a different country, and that's what I'm doing. That sounds amazing. So you're going on this journey to find yourself? And uh, in a way, I guess. I, I think I know who I am in some ways. It's just about realizing my dreams. Okay. Because I'm <laughs> tired of dreaming. <laughs> you're tired of dreaming? Yeah, I just want to wanna follow my dreams now. And I, the number one thing I want to do right now is just travel more, meet more people, get out of my comfort zone. That kind of stuff. Wow. Yeah. I'm really blown away, Lesse. It's so good for you. It's not so good for us because that means that Lesse is not going to be here with us uh, at the studio. Yeah, we already miss you, Lasse. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be sad. But, you know, that's how change is. Yeah, but, but follow your heart and make, make your dream work. It's the only thing you can do. I mean, you have to be true to yourself. And if there's something that you feel really passionate about, you have to do it. Otherwise, you're not living. So that's how I view exactly. it. So right now it's a choice in the choice between the heart and the wallet is mm, a yeah, maybe, choice I guess. of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not financial decision. It's because I need to do it. That's so how I feel. Heart. Yeah. yeah. Lesse is following his heart. Okay. So basically when it comes to the choice of uh, between your heart and your wallet, you of course have more or less like five scenarios since we are here at You've Got Five Options. And scenario number one is you just follow the wallet and you try to earn money. Scenario number two is you just follow the heart, meaning that you try to do your best with the dream you have and you will just simply be hoping that the money will follow sooner or later. Scenario number three which has been my uh, journey for the last few years, is you try to balance both. Uh, so you uh, spend a lot of time yeah, trying to balance between the two, especially if you additionally have a family. That is a quite thing to be able to do that. And then scenario number four, you do your wallet day job and then you follow your heart as your hobby. And the scenario number five is you try to do your heart job as a day job and then if you are still missing some money you are trying to earn in your so-called spare time that sounds funny though to try to earn money in your spare time but i yeah. hope you guys know especially what I mean. that we don't have so much <laughs> spare time <laughs> yeah well basically it is you are trying to go full time with your heart project and then you just try to earn money whatever is missing that was the idea so we will be discussing those five scenarios here but before we go there i'd like to ask five very important questions to our guest here. And maybe Lesse will also feel like answering some of those questions. We will see. Yeah. Lesse mm -hmm. is always a surprise. Sometimes he does feel like participating. Other times he doesn't. So uh, I'm a wild card. <laughs> yeah, yeah, our <laughs> joker. joker. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> I was thinking about it. So we will see how it goes today. But the first thing that I would like you to consider is your values. So when you are trying to choose between the heart and the wallet, what is really important for you? What are your values? So, Edita, tell me, what are your values? My values are very clear. It's family and friends, and later goes passion, and to do what you really love in your life. And this all should be somehow combined. Yesterday, actually, I was at a very interesting event about the company that uh, is teaching that you should follow your heart and that you should do what what you what you feel that is really right for you and for your clients and to spend the most of the time with people that you love and they are your family and your friends uh, they make a survey and they showed that our coworkers is sometimes we don't have a deep rel relations with them so this company was very unique because uh, gave example that allowed their employees work from wherever they want and spend, surround yourself with people that you love and care, like family and friends. And in their business model, it's somehow working. So they combine heart and wallet. 
I love it. What's the name of that company? I will tell you later. <laughs> okay. That's really beautiful. I actually really, really love it. This is so congruent where, with where I am right now. And this is what I am looking for in my life right now. I want this kind of a business model. That's amazing. I want to know what it is. And what they also proved that the heart has a neurons like a brain. So that actually we should listen more to our heart because our heart is also very smart. That I love as well. Yeah, so much, so much into it. What about you, Lesa? What are your values? Wow, that's a big question. <laughs> yeah. It's difficult for me to answer in some ways because I am kind of going on a journey in a way <laughs> to like you said, maybe in some way to discover myself, I just try to realize myself, I have an idea of who I am and what I need to do. I mean, my values, it's family and friends, first and foremost. But I also feel like that if I am to be true to myself and connect with the right people, I yeah, I need to be true to myself and I need to realize my own dreams and hopes. And just the saying that I'm gonna uh, mess it up but it's like, it's hard to be loved by others if you don't love yourself. And in some ways, that's where I am. It's not because I don't love myself, but I need to realize myself before I can go get the life I really want. And, you know, that's where I'm at right now. <laughs> this is really beautiful. I would just add that, Lassa, you have like a clear vision, actually, what you love. It's like... Yeah, uh, in some ways. But you, and so you should maybe try to keep on the track in the future mm. and do it because I think that you know but some things were stopping you from realization of your dreams. True. <laughs> uh, we will be talking about the things stopping you as well, believe me. <laughs> so when we'll I find solutions. Yeah. So when I was thinking about values when it comes to choosing between your heart and your wallet, it is actually very important to be true to yourself because there are some of us for whom success and money is important. It is an important thing of in our life. So mm. it is very good for us to realize. It's also important for many of us to have family. And some of us might want to have children or even more children. And we have to know how important, how big of a priority it is for us. And how will we be able to support that dream, that value set, if we are trying to follow our heart. There is some yeah, weird Yeah, if you hear noises. some noises, it's not like a blue whale or something. It's the construction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like there's been construction here the entire time I've been here. Like <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. guys, we are moving to the new studio. And soon, the, uh, soon hopefully, there will be no <laughs> weird sounds anymore. Yeah, on booming the, in the background. But let's yeah. say that this is like a metaphor, like a blue mm. ocean strategy. Yeah. We are in yeah. a big ocean of possibilities and we have to find out to what to follow. Your heart or your wallet? Where is your heart? In your wallet or your wallet is in your heart? That's a very good question. So as a coach, when I work with my clients, I have this exercise that is called value elicitation that I take a full hour with my clients where we really dig into their values because that's extremely important when it comes to setting up your goal, when it comes to setting up your direction. It has to be congruent with your values. If it is not, you are going to sabotage yourself. You are not going to work towards it. You might think you want something, but if it is not your true value, if it is not something that that drives you, you are not going to have the motivation to go after it. So that's why the values are so important. So that was the first key thing to consider. And I can see that Edith, I would like to add on to that. Yes, that go I ahead. call this integrity, that yeah. your values has to be combined with what you do. Because if it's not, something is not not clear, not working. Yeah, but sometimes we forget to check in with our values. Sometimes yeah, very often people yeah. don't do this. Yeah, so that's why, guys, really spend some good time with yourself and your values and try to see what, are, what values are really your priority. The second thing that I wanted you to consider when it comes to choosing between the heart and the money is your beliefs, because that's another extremely important part for ourselves when it comes to being successful in life and building career and building your path in life, your beliefs. Beliefs can be limiting or empowering. And guys, I love this saying where we say that beliefs 
are the thoughts which are repeated over and over again. Beliefs are not facts, but they are something that drive us extremely powerfully. That's why it's so important when it comes to choosing your path in life to know what are your beliefs and to work with those beliefs if they are limiting you. So the most important thing when it comes to choosing between the heart and the money is actually, do you believe yourself that you can make it? That's the most important thing. So tell me, Edita, a little bit about your beliefs when it comes to your heart and your path, your career. I think that's very true what you said, that we should have this belief that, that we are able to fulfill our what we, what we really want and I also think that we should always keep on track and just if you love something just follow it and find a way like you said before after your hours at work or as a side project but just never make a resignation of your this what you love and never let beliefs to stop you from doing it so if you have a bad beliefs you can always update them and change them and then you should contact Marta because Marta is good at <laughs> changing the stopping beliefs. Yeah, the limiting beliefs. Have you had a limiting belief yourself that you have managed to work with so that you could transition from this corporate work until following your heart? Uh, no, actually I didn't because I always was uh, brave enough to try new things, crazy enough, some say. But uh, but I had some um, things that were stopping me, like, for example, I couldn't give a right value for things I were doing. So it's more, not more maybe beliefs, but things that sometimes, especially women, we have a problem with value our project because we have some skills, but we don't know what is the market value for this. And as a woman, especially as a mother, we are giving one. So we are ready to give it for free. And it's like we should always find a way this balance between heart and wallet. That's a really great point. And I think it does have a lot to do with beliefs. Because if you believe that what you are giving has a really good price, then you will be able to ask for it. But if you have this belief said that as women, we should be giving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe free. that was. Uh, yeah. yeah, so it, it is a good uh, it is a good example. And of course, giving, sharing, it, it is not a bad belief to think that we should be sharing things. But if you want to earn some money, that might be a belief that is in some <laughs> way <laughs> yeah, limiting you. What about empowering beliefs? What are those beliefs that have allowed you to be courageous and to drive you to the mm, success? First of all, it's like uh, the surround yourself with uplifting people, with people who are doing something, who are active and you can see what they are doing. You can get inspired. And it's like Believe. I always. That's that's why I started from these people because I always love to uh, hear or read some motivation things. So some to change, to motivate yourself, or to try to think about things in other way, in a new way. Find something new. Okay. What about you, Lesser? What is your take when it comes to beliefs? Have you had to overcome some limiting beliefs to be able to now go and follow your heart? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> I feel like it's a very directed question, but you know. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've talked about it before, but, you know, depression, self-doubt, it's been my biggest hurdles that I've had to overcome to follow my beliefs. Yeah. And would you be willing to share how did you manage to overcome some of those beliefs that were <sighs> stopping you before? I think I just became fed up, you know. There's a certain point where you're going to make a change or not. That's how I view it. It's just gone around thinking a certain way for many years that oh my god this construction but uh, <laughs> you know gone around many years thinking a certain way that was not the right way for me to think you know doubting myself all the time yeah at a certain point it's just like you have two options you can continue down the road you're already going or you can make a change and you have to I think have the will yourself to do that and I just became tired of feeling the way that I've felt for many years. It was so it, for me, it was just like, what the fuck are you doing with your life, man? So what have you started to tell yourself to get you out of that? Well, it was like I had two bad years, really bad years in my teen. Um, and I f started to believe, yeah, maybe I'm not worth it. You know, maybe I'm not worth to be loved. Maybe I don't have the skills to do what I actually want the most, even though I've known it for many years in some ways. 
And it was then a change happened that, you know, fuck that. That's not right, you know. You, you shouldn't think that way about yourself. And it, I don't know how to say it. I was just tired of feeling that way. And I felt that I was kind of like broken and I had been going through life like a robot, <laughs> suppressing everything called feelings and emotions. So I just kept everything inside for years and years and years. And at a point it was like I could barely exist anymore without breaking down. It was like, well, this is not right. <laughs> this is not how you're supposed to feel. So I had to make a change, you know. And I don't know. I don't feel like I had an option, you know, just then I have to change my life. And I had to acknowledge for myself that I had issues, you know, with depression, with loneliness. Um, and that was the first step. It was really acknowledging that, okay, this is the situation. It fucking sucks, so I need to change it. And then I need, you know, acknowledgement uh, to myself was the first step. So and the then, first step was the acknowledgement to yourself. Yeah, yeah. And what is the belief now? What are you telling yourself now that you are brave enough to just leave everything behind and go follow your mm. heart? That's a beautiful thing to do. So what is your belief now? I don't know what my belief. I mean, I just I just have to do what feels right. It's the only thing I can say, you know. And a lot of people, you know, they they have a clear vision of what they want to do and it's very f specific like they have a specific career that they want. Um But for me, it's only about living a fulfilling life. That's all I want to do right now. So it's the only thing I can do. I don't even care about career education at the moment, to be completely honest. I'm just going to go live. You know, it's... I read something, I don't know if something you wrote or something, but it's like when we're children, we just do what we love. We don't even think about it. We just do it because we love it. And that's yes, just what I go... Yeah, 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 exactly. And that's just what I want to go back to in a way, you know? As people they question so many things when we grow up we question everything but if you know you want to do something just do it and stop stop finding like a reason for everything if it feels right it's right we don't need to justify everything like i think most people actually know who they are and they know what they want to do it's just a question of if they maybe courage is not the right word or in some way it is but just find the courage, whatever it is that you need to do what you want to do and then do it. And stop questioning what everybody else thinks and your own thoughts that can play tricks on you. I don't know what else to say. That is really beautiful. And you did give us some beautiful beliefs. Like if something feels right, mm. just do it. Yeah. That's a beautiful belief. I to think in some ways yeah. it's that simple. Really. And yeah. This is this heart intelligence that yeah. you follow your heart and that your heart will lead you somehow. Yeah, and yeah, maybe yeah. you don't know the path, but you give yourself a chance and uh, yeah. do this something that you really feel and that you can always rebuild your life, mm. change something. That's beautiful. Thank you, Lasse. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Okay, let us move on to the third important thing to consider when it comes to choosing between the heart and the wallet. And it is something that for that we have touched upon a little bit with our values. It's the kids and the family. So if you are a person who already has kids or you are a person who wants to have kids soon and you know that it actually is a financial investment as well, it might be sometimes also due to our beliefs thought that we need to have the money. So we therefore should choose between the heart and the wallet, the wallet, because we should have the money to pay for the kids and the family. But on the other hand, there is this other thing that I have been reflecting on recently. What's really important and what do we want to teach our children? Do we want to teach our children that they should follow the money? They should follow the wallet or that maybe money is not the most important thing in life and that we would actually like them to, by our example, lead them and show them to follow their hearts. What do you think, Edita? First, I will start from this that I always say that I have at least three reasons to earn money. It's for my three kids. And like you said, when you have kids, you have to financially support them. You have to give this money to, to the house. And uh, that's why for me, it's always important to have this balanced wallet and heart. That's my combination. And that's what I would like to teach my skill, my kids to have the uh, ability to be independent in life and to know how to earn money. But always try to follow your heart and do something what you really feel passionate about and what you love. 
Okay, thank you. Lesa, I will not ask you that question because <laughs> you don't have kids yet. No. But I will ask you both one question because the fourth important thing to consider here is the obstacles. What has been stopping you so far from basically following your heart and being successful in that? Because it's not always you either follow the money and then there is no heart in it or you follow the heart and there is no money in it. But sometimes we are in this situation that we feel like, okay, I'm doing this right now really just because of the money. And I have something in my heart that I would like to follow, but it is so difficult to do that. So it's very important to ask ourselves that question. What has been stopping me so far from making the money on my heart project. Tell me a little bit about that, Edita. I think I'm on a good way to combine these two things. And mm -hmm. uh, from my experience, it's like the, the wallet is stopping to, to follow your heart because sometimes you need this money to, for example, if you want to make a movie, you need a good camera, you need to pay the crew, you, you need this financial side. So this is, for me, it's both. and. I don't know what else I could add. Yeah, so if uh, if looking into that scenario, so what might have been stopping you so far? It was like, how do I get the money to realize my passion projects, right? Yes, exactly, because I have a clear vision what I want to do. I have my things that I want to make and I will make this. I'm, I'm making them sooner or later. But it's like the sometimes... The wallet was the case in, in my life that, for example, I couldn't buy a camera that cost 64,000 corons or something. That's that's really expensive. Yeah. What about you, Lesser? Uh, What has been stopping you so far? Well, I'm the biggest obstacle, as I already uh, mentioned earlier, I mean, it's been myself, you know, my own thoughts, my self-doubt and worrying too much about what other people thought of me. And uh, I just don't care anymore. <laughs> Not in like, I just don't care about life. I just don't care what other people think, you know. But this was also what yesterday this director of this company said, that he said that when you follow your heart, you stop looking for this, what people, other people, what society and everybody is telling what you're supposed to do and what, what they think about you, that the most important is what you feel is right. Yeah, true. Yeah. So the reason why I'm asking you about those obstacles is because in coaching, when I work with my clients and that's where coaching is uh, wonderful, is that we actually tell ourselves very often these stories around the obstacles. It's so expensive to get this or mm -hmm. where would I find so much money to realize my project? Or, you know, you, you start telling yourself things about yourself mm -hmm. which are not even true, which are... They are not based on any facts. Very often the beliefs that we were discussing, you know, the limiting beliefs. And w this is where coaching is so useful and so and works so amazingly well. This is where you transform your obstacles into your actions. What are the actions that you can take to overcome your obstacles? So that was basically the fourth thing that I wanted you to consider. The last thing that I want you to consider I will give it as food for thought, you, our dear listeners. It is how much are you willing to give or how much are you willing to give up when taking that decision? So when you are in a position that in this current time, you feel that it has to be a choice between the wallet and the heart, how much are you willing to give or how much are you willing to give up? And with that powerful question, I would like to say thank you for today and I hope that you will also tune in to listen to the second part of this uh, series of how to choose between the heart and the wallet where we will be discussing the five different scenarios. Thank you, Lesse, and thank you, Edita, so much for sharing with me today. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. You are listening to You've Got 5 Options show, where we solve your life challenges. Remember that you can visit our website, the5options.com, where you can submit your challenge or find our previous challenges. That's all, folks.